John Joseph Papalia, Italian, Papa, modifier letter vertical line, Lee, modifier letter triangular colon, A, March 18th, 1924, May 31st, 1997, also known as Johnny Pops Papalia or The Enforcer, was an Italian-Canadian mafia figure based in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. He was boss of the Papalia crime family, one of three major crime families in Hamilton, the other two being the Musitano crime family and the Lupino crime family. Papalia was born in Hamilton, to Italian immigrants. At a young age, he was involved in petty crimes. By the 1950s, he moved his way up to drug trafficking, and formed a powerful alliance with the Buffalo crime family. Papalia also operated various gambling bars and vending machine businesses. By the 1960s and 1970s, he played a role in the French Connection smuggling operation. On May 31, 1997, Papalia was shot to death outside his vending machine business by Kenneth Murdoch, a hitman hired by Angelo and Pat Musitano of the Musitano family. Early life and criminal activities Papalia was born on March 18, 1924 in Hamilton. His father, Antonio Tony Papalia, who had early Pixotteria values, was a bootlegger who immigrated to Canada from Delianuova, Calabria, Italy, in 1912, through New York City before moving on to Montreal, Quebec, then New Brunswick in the coal mines, before finally settling on Railway Street in Hamilton. Ontario in 1917. His father became associated with Calabrian compatriot and notorious bootlegger Rocco Perry, and later Guelph mobster Tony Silvestro, working as a bootlegger who operated speakhouses. He was suspected in playing a role in the murder of Perry's wife Bessie Starkman in 1930. Papalia's mother, Maria Rosa Italiano, also came from a mafia family the Italiano clan, who also participated in Perry's gang. Maria Rosa initially married Antonio's younger brother Giuseppe Papalia Jr., giving birth to two sons in Italy, however when Giuseppe died, she immigrated to Canada with her two sons in 1923 to marry Antonio. Johnny, the oldest brother to Frank, Rocco and Dominic Papalia, half-brothers Joseph and Angelo Papalia, brother-in-law Tony Pugliese, and associates, all worked in running his clubs and gambling operations. It is also believed Antonio and his son Johnny Papalia, along with Stefano Magadino of the Buffalo crime family, played a role in Perry's disappearance in 1944 after Perry left members of his mafia crew slotted, though both cases remain unsolved. Papalia was involved in petty crimes from a young age. He was arrested in 1949 and sentenced to two years in prison at the Guelph Reformatory for possession of narcotics, down from conspiracy to distribute narcotics. When he was released in 1951, he moved to Montreal for a stint, where he worked with Luigi Greco and New York Bonanno crime family representative Carmine Galanti in heroin trafficking. He later shifted to Toronto extorting brokers and running gambling clubs. By the mid-1950s, Papalia was called back to Ontario by Magardino and inducted into the Canadian arm of the powerful Cosa Nostra family of Buffalo. In 1955, with assistance from Silvestro, Papalia started opening charter gambling clubs in Hamilton and Toronto. Silvestro's son in law Danny Gasparini, Papalia's brothers Frank, Rocco, and Dominic, half brothers Joseph and Angelo, brother in law Tony Pugliese, and associates Red Labar, Freddy Gabari, Frank Mark Hilden, and Jackie Weaver all worked in running Papalia's clubs. After police raids, Papalia started working with James McDermott and Vincent Feely in several clubs throughout southern Ontario. Extradition and sentencing by the late 1950s, Papalia was a made man in the Buffalo family and boss of the Papalia family Ontario faction. The illegal gambling business in Toronto was very lucrative, dominated by Maxi Bluestein who kept the mafia out of his pocket. Bluestein's Lakeview Club did more than $13 million a year, but on March 21, 1961, at the Town Tavern, Bluestein met with Papalia in Toronto.
Bluestein refused to merge his operations with Papalias and was beaten with brass knuckles, iron bars and fists as a result. The 100-some witnesses to the beating were reluctant to come forward, but Papalia was sentenced in June of that year to 18 months, while Bluestein kept hold to the Toronto gambling market. Though Bluestein had paranoia and was committed to a mental institution in 1973 after he had killed a friend, before later dying of a heart attack in 1984. Later in 1961, Papalia demolished the family home and built a warehouse for his vending machine business, an all-cash business, to serve as the front for his criminal operations. By the early 1960s, he earned reputation from the French Connection, a smuggling operation that supplied over 80% of America's heroin market between the 1960s and 1970s, having strong connections with the Buffalo family. He worked in this operation with the Sicilian Ghiacci brothers Alberto and Vito, along with the vending machine businesses with Alberto, until he was brutally murdered by the Buffalo crime family in late 1961, and Vito jailed. On May 22, 1961, several people were indicted related to the French connection from informants Salvatore Rinaldo and Matteo Palmieri. Papalio was extradited to the United States for trial on March 15, 1962 for his role in the smuggling ring. He was coughing up blood due to the tuberculosis he contracted as a child. On March 11, 1963, he was found guilty and sentenced to 10 years despite his condition. Due to the indictment, Magardino promoted Santos Gabbetta to leader of the Buffalo family's Ontario branch, replacing Papalia. Post release on January 25, 1968, after serving less than half the sentence, he was released from the United States Penitentiary in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, and sent back to Canada. While he was in jail, his father died on May 14, 1964, with his mother dying on July 27, 1970. Giacomo Lupino and Santos Gibetta also answered to Magadino while Papalio was in prison. In 1974, Montreal mobsters Vincenzo Catrani and Paolo Violi were overheard on a police wiretap threatening to kill Papalio and demanding $150,000 after he used their names in the $300,000 extortion of Toronto businessman Stanley Bader without notifying or cutting them in on the score. Bader testified against them and the three were convicted of extortion in 1975 and sentenced to six years in prison. Viley and Katrani got their sentences appealed to just six months, but Papalias was rejected. He served four of the years. In 1982, after Bader had moved south to Miami, he was sprayed with bullets when answering his front door. Papalia has been linked with his death, as well as the 1983 death of Toronto mobster Paul Volpe, but no charges were laid. In January 1981, Papalia married Janetta Hayes in a private ceremony. They would separate in 1983. In July 1983, Real Simmer moved to Ontario from Montreal, where he met with Papalia in Hamilton on behalf of Frank Cotrone. Simmer seized the Ontario market bringing Quebec strippers to Toronto clubs, where he allowed Papalia to put his pinball machines in his clubs. Papalia was known for his hatred of outlaw bikers and in the 1980s1990s made it very clear that he did not want a Hells Angels chapter set up in Hamilton. Walter Stadnick, a Hamilton native and Hells Angels in charge of expanding the Angels into Ontario, was forced to keep a low profile in his hometown as long as Papalia lived. In the 1990s, Papalia Lieutenant Inyo Pegleg Mora borrowed $7.2 million from Montreal mob boss Vito Retsudo and gave the bulk of the money to Papalia to open an upscale restaurant and nightclub in Toronto. After the Retsudo crime family were not repaid, in September 1996, Mora was shot in the head four times at a Vaughn farm. Jacinto Arguri was arrested and charged with Mora's murder, but was acquitted for lack of evidence. Papalia's brother Frank, the former underboss of the family, died of natural causes in 2014 at the age of 83. Death Papalia was fatally shot in the head on May 31, 
1997, at the age of 73 in the parking lot of 20 Railway Street outside his vending machine business, Galaxy Vending, in Hamilton. The hitman Kenneth Murdoch claimed that he had been ordered to kill Pops by Angelo and Pat Musitano of the Musitano crime family who owe $250,000 to cover bookmaking debts to Papalia. Murdoch also killed Papalia's right-hand man Carmen Burlaro two months later. In November 1998, Murdoch pleaded guilty to three counts of second-degree murder, was sentenced to life imprisonment and named Pat and Angelo as the men who had ordered the murders. He was released on parole after serving 13 years. In February 2000, the brothers were sentenced to 10 years for conspiracy in the murder of Erlaro in a plea bargain arrangement. No conviction was obtained in relation to the murder of Papalia. In October 2006, the Musitano brothers were both released from prison. Amid controversy, Papalia was not given a full funeral mass by the Catholic Church due to his criminal history. He was buried at Holy Sepulchre Cemetery, in a family plot, in Burlington, Ontario. Legacy crime expert Jerry Langton called Papalia the most important mafiosi in Ontario of his generation. Langton noted Papalia had a marked distaste for outlaw bikers and in a sign of his power, Walter Stagnick, the former president of Hell's Angels Canada, had trouble establishing the Angels in Ontario while Papalia was alive. Langton stated, It's hard for people to understand now just how powerful Johnny Pops was. He was basically the only Canadian Mafia figure who could sit at the table with the top guys in New York. He was part of the French Connection, he ruled a big swath of Canada, particularly southern Ontario, for a very long time. After the Mafia imploded in less than a year, there was no one to oppose the bikers and they came rushing in. One police officer, Sean Clarkson, of the Niagara Falls Police Department, stated, There was nobody to stand up to the Hells Angels the way Berlaro or Papalia would have. Papalia, even though he was 73 when he died, he wouldn't have put up with that. Notes. Further reading Humphreys, Adrian. The Enforcer Colin Johnny Pops Papalia, A Life and Death in the Mafia. Toronto, Canada. Harper Collins, 1999. ISBN 0-00-200016-4 Langton, Jerry Showdown. How the Outlaws, Hells Angels and Cops Fought for Control of the Streets, Toronto. John Wiley, 2010, ISBN 0470678788X References